The start of the 21st century is marked by a number of trends and challenges. The growth of mobile computing, smartphones, social media, crowdsourcing, and cloud computing have transformed the way in which humans interact. These advancements have further enabled traditional geospatial technologies such as GIS and remote sensing to reveal patterns of resource use, climate change, and human impacts on Earth. Sustainability has become a guiding principle for governments, industry, and nonprofit organizations in recognition of dwindling resources, deforestation, species extinctions, ocean acidification, and a warming climate. The American Association of Geographers held its annual meeting in San Francisco in the last week of March and brought together geographers from around the globe addressing a wide range of topics, many of which touched on the theme of sustainability. The subject of water scarcity and water security was presented by eminent Caltech scientist J. Femingledi. Using NASA's GRACE satellite system, Changes in Earth's gravitational force allowed for detecting changes in surface and groundwater. Data analysis revealed a steady decrease in water availability in California and other dry regions of the world. This condition led the author to conclude that California and other arid and semi-arid regions are moving into a state of chronic water scarcity. This circumstance has led to increased pumping of groundwater, which is not being replenished. Among the effects is increased salinity, that is the salt in water, and land subsidence. Part of the San Joaquin Valley has dropped by as much as two feet per year. An obvious concern with res arises with respect to food production. Agriculture is the largest single user of water in California, as it is in most places around the world. California is celebrated as the world's most productive agricultural region, but it has come at a cost. Moving into the future, there will be a need to reduce the amount of water used for growing crops and livestock. Among the ways to mitigate this problem are improved water efficiency, reduction in water thirsty crops, such as cotton, rice, and alfalfa, reduced food waste. Americans are said to waste as much as 40% of all food purchased and eating lower on the food chain, meat requires much more water per calorie than do vegetables. The issue of water scarcity and water availability are inseparable from global warming. Climate experts have long predicted that global warming would lead to increased rainfall in the wetter parts of the globe, such as tropical rainforest and humid continental regions, and less rainfall in arid and semi-arid regions. This hypothesis is now supported with data on rainfall and temperature trends over the last decade. In addition, research supports an early anthropogenic climate change hypothesis Ice core and other data indicate that climate has been warming over the last seven to 10,000 years since the birth of agriculture. The two principal greenhouse gases shown here, carbon dioxide and methane, have steadily increased during this period over the last seven to 10,000 years, which also corresponds to drying of the regions of Mesopotamia where humans first developed agriculture. Of course, the rapid industrialization and population growth of the 20th century has accelerated this warming trend, and we are continuing to see increases in CO2 and methane in the atmosphere. All regions of the world have been experiencing increasing urbanization. Nowhere is this trend more dramatically illustrated than in China, which has witnessed the migration of hundreds of millions of rural people from the farms to the rapidly growing cities on the coast, such as Shanghai and Shenzhen, that are the heart of China's booming economy. As cities grow in size and complexity, a variety of sustainability questions arise. In general, city dwellers use less resources per capita than their rural counterparts. Improved water efficiency and reclamation is significantly reduced per capita 
water use, although water contamination is an issue uh, as reflected by the current crisis of lead poisoning in Flint, Michigan. Energy efficient architecture and improved mass transit systems are also reducing the amount of energy used along with the amount of greenhouse gases emitted. Of course, highly developed cities such as San Francisco, shown here, have the resources to develop in ways in which poorer cities do not. Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Mumbai, India are two massive urban areas in which the number of new residents far out exceeds far exceeds the capacity to provide the adequate housing and related infrastructure. Such squatter settlements have produced some creative solutions to water, power, and sewage needs, but the challenges remain great. Cities have long grappled with how to deal with the urban poor, many of whom are recent immigrants. A recent book titled Territories of Poverty confronts the geography of poverty in a variety of contexts. The case is made that many city programs intended to alleviate poverty may actually perpetuate it. In particular, structural problems such as the political and economic systems are often not addressed. In wealthy cities such as San Francisco, the poor are often displaced, that is pushed out, through a process of gentrification in which wealthier residents buy homes in poorer neighborhoods. In less developed places such as Sao Paulo, poor shanty towns, such as the one shown in the image, may be physically fenced off from more affluent areas. Urban areas are at the forefront of the technology revolution. With extensive Wi-Fi coverage and high rates of smartphone usage, some scholars argue that there is an increasingly blurred distinction between physical space and cyberspace. This reality has enabled the social media revolution, but has also raised concerns about privacy. Others argue that digital labor is being exploited by corporations. As a case in point, consider the Occupy movement, which was a grassroots effort to raise awareness of wealth inequality. Facebook and Twitter were key tools that enabled organizing during the various Occupy movements which in turn resulted in significant increase in market share and revenue for these corporations. This is the idea of the digital labor, that citizens are providing free labor. Geospatial technologies, like in other information technologies, can be viewed as improving uh, the utopian or visionary view, uh, or as degrading the dystopian or skeptic view the conditions in the city. Crowdsourcing and hackathons are considered to be creative ways to open and democratize data for the public good. On the other hand, companies are employing geofencing to target advertising based on the monitoring of cell phone and internet patterns. Maps are increasingly embedded in our daily lives. Users often assume that maps uh, are accurate without much critical thought. One study looked at the representation of Jerusalem, an international city, in Google Maps. The result revealed a bias. Israeli-occupied parts of the city were mapped with considerably more detail than the Palestinian areas. This reflects political power, wealth, and education, or lack thereof. In this same project, OpenStreetMap, was used as a form of volunteer geographic information to improve the accuracy of Palestinian neighborhoods. As you can see, there are a variety of areas in which geography and geospatial technologies and sustainability interact.